Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo guide on the exotic mission Presage, which dropped in Season of the Chosen this week. I am doing it on the Hunter, and as you can see here, I went with Izanagi in my primary, Akelos in my, my energy, and the Apex Predator in my heavier rocket launcher. I'm running a War Mine Cell build, so you guys can see if you pause the video, you can get to see the mods and exactly why I've put them on. And I went with uh, Izanagi. I, 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 the first time I completed this, I used Bite of the Fox. So you can actually use a different sniper. You don't have to use Izanagi. I decided to go with Izanagi for, for my second run, which is the run you're watching now. Uh, j just because I felt the single hit damage of Izanagi would really, really work here with the Catalyst. Which, as far as I know, has been reintroduced into the game with Season of the Chosen. I love these sorts of missions coming back, coming into Destiny 2. This kind of, uh, these are kind of smaller versions of Zero Hour and Whisper uh, along the same lines, I think, as Harbinger. But I, th I think this one's better because it's a brand new space. So as you can see, we've just completed the first little part of the jumping puzzle. I will be giving you as many tips as I can just to help you complete this. Uh, just follow the route I'm taking on screen. And it will take you to so so when you when you load into this area, you're gonna be in the hull, if you like, and the door will be closed, you won't be able to go through the door, so you have to jump all the way around the side, and then when you drop down, uh you'll be behind the door, you'll be able to press some sort of uh you'll be able to use a switch which which is a feature of this, and it will open that whole door i reckon if you're in here with a fire team and someone's not so great at jumping someone else can go around and open that door and they should be able to just come through on screen there you've seen me shoot that pod that is the uh, there are basically a couple of different mechanics you've got the you've got the switches you've got the pods and you've got fuses and we'll speak a bit more about them when they come in the pods when you shoot them if you're right up close to them and you shoot them they give you uh, a, a a buff that allows you to go through these kind of Gloop walls. That's what I've been calling them anyway. Uh, and uh, if you if you try to go through those those walls without without that buff, you'll just get burnt, and that is the end of it. So when you get to a section here, you're gonna go, go behind you. You're gonna get these. This happens quite a bit. These kind of little groups of uh, little groups of exploders. I went with the Ikelos because it creates wall main cells, and wall main cells are good. I've got fire team medicon. So every time I break a wall main cell, I'm going to get health. So what you're going to be doing is whenever there's an impasse, and because I'm showing you exactly where to go, you don't have to figure this stuff out yourself. There are three different things you'll be looking for in here. There'll be switches, there will be pods. As you can see here, that switch opened up this doorway, which gave me a pod. And you'll be looking for uh, the like open fuses. Now, sometimes you'll open a switch, will open a little door, which will let you see a fuse, which the fuse then will normally, when you shoot the fuse, it will open up a little door, uh, and inside the door will be a pod. But if you follow my exact route, as you can see here, not, not my exact route, when you come into this room, you want to jump up here, right, and go left. The first bit I jumped up onto is the plate where you went. And this is kind of zigzaggy. So these kind of, these uh, barriers, these uh, energy barriers, you see those lightning barriers, you've got to find ways to go past them. You'll, they'll never shut down. So you kind of go into the doorways, go into the areas around them and uh, find, find the switch or the open turret or whatever. You see there, the war mine cell is super helpful because it just explodes. A ton of things so when, when when you get in here as soon as you get in you're going to jump up on the platform behind you and go at the end and you'll have a little a little switch which then opens up uh an exit this is the exit out of this area actually but you have to do you have to shoot a fuse first before you you get the exit open so we jump all the way over to the other side and uh open use that switch which then you go back and there's a fuse below you shoot the fuse which opens up <laughs> it's going to sound strange because it's not not near the boss but opens up a, an exit from this area that's probably for me could be the trickiest part of this such a small part but it can be tricky 
and and you go down here. Watch out when you when you go down here. Watch out for fall damage. You can, you will die if you don't bush to save yourself. This is kind of a meme to Star Wars, the trash trash compactor kind of thing. So as you can see, as soon as you or, or, as soon as you start it, I'm looking straight away. There are fuses under these vents. You see there? There's a fuse right there. I'm gonna tether and try and get rid of these exploders. And you've got three. You've got to find three of these fuses. Now, I'm going to say to you guys, the locations of the fuses aren't always going to be the same. So if you've done this once before, you see there, there's, there's both of them. My, the war mine cell, uh, it opened up the, the vents. It bust some of the vents, which allowed me to see that very quickly. So, so my kind of my kind of hint here would be, you've got to get rid of, if you, if you run a war mine cell build, it makes it so much easier. You've got to get rid of those exploders, and then, as, as you can see, I was jumping up to see the fuses lit through the vents. Uh, and, 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 and you have to shoot three vents, and then the compactor stops, and then there's a, an exit. Uh, it's uh, opening in one of the vents. It's lit up with three red... Uh, three red uh, lights. Four red lights, sorry. Then, once you, once you get out there, you're going to be faced with this area. You can see here that it's like tons of these little little stalker guys and and what as soon as I get this war main cell I, I stop concentrating on those guys and go for the war main cell because that will kill them all uh, that will kill them all and it will give you health back and just clears that whole section there are bigger guys over the other side uh, shielded shielded guys we'll just go around here and get the war main cell from around here I can do it now with invisibility, which gives me health back as well. And more war main cells, which give me, you know, you can see there, I've got I've got everything for the war main cell build on. I've got uh, Wrath of Rasputin, uh, Rage of the War Mind, uh, Fire Team Medic, uh, Burning Cells. I've got the whole lot. And Burning Cells are really good in situations like this because uh, enemies that you might not be able to see will take tick damage. You'll see them burning. And it gives you an idea where they are. The idea for that part we just done, that kind of section we just done, is ideally, if you can get, if you've still got your tether, ideally you just tether those guys. I've done that the last time I've done it. That's what I've done. But these are the two combat sections. This is your main combat section out with the boss. So what I do when I get in here is same as what I done in the, the previous room. I try and get rid of. Uh, shielded guys you see there I'm using the Azanagi as a proper sniper and I try and clear this section here and then what will happen I'll go back down because there's, there's more guys down here as with the other section try and get rid of the, the shielded guys the guys that are going to throw those kind of those uh, tether points at you I just try and get rid of those guys now on basically the end game on, on this part is you're going to end up with like two insane uh, uh, ogres. The, they're going to spawn in. Kind of, you see there, I'm just waiting for ads to spawn up so that I can break that woman's cell. Uh, we're going to do all the damage on this side. This ramp offers a lot, a lot of cover. You see there, that's those mad ogres. This offers a lot of cover. This ramp offers a lot of cover as well. So I knew that were ads behind me. Got the war main cell, so I didn't bother turning around. You see how much damage I'm taking. That is why I ran double arc resist. Simply because it's, uh, did I, sorry, I ran double solar resist, not not arc resist. I ran double solar resist because the only thing in here that I was doing any kind of major arc to me with these guys and because I'm so far away uh, I felt like I, I, I would be cool so what I'm trying to do is you know honed edge shots uh, it's really difficult to hit precision shots on these on these guys uh, because they're, they're like uh, constantly constantly nodding their heads uh, it's really difficult to get head shot on them as you can see you'll see me You'll see in a minute. It's got to be because 
I, I got the headshot there. Well, sometimes, when, so, sometimes when you watch these guys going backwards, it's like they're, they're listening to some sort of hip hop music in headphones. <laughs> it's, good. it's insane. So I managed to get out of there. Uh, I used this, this this bottom corner as cover because there is a lot of cover here at the bottom. Uh, and and any time I'd spawn up on this bridge, I'd go up and take them out. As I say, exactly like that, that's my kind of thing with these guys. Uh, I, I as you can see, I, I kind of got encroached there, but this whole side is a great side. Now I've got my tether. That's what we were waiting for. I'm just, I was just kind of biding my time. And there we go. Now there's, there's just a couple of enemies left up. So, I used this bottom, bottom right hand corner. And, uh, you know, one, probably my, my, the, 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 the bunch of ads that I, if it's not the taking, it's definitely the scorn. The scorn of my most hated. I've got no love for the scorn. But it's cool that they've the, the, the scorn all the thing. Now, as you can see, you've got to be careful. It doesn't matter where you go. At this part, when you've got one of these ogres, one of these scorn ogres left up. See him down there. Now, I'm not going to bust too much of my uh, heavy. I want to keep heavy for coming out of here. Whenever you get into these areas, you want to prioritize enemies. So the enemies that I'm prioritize, I prioritize as the shielded guys. I prioritize the shielded guys first. You need to do it from a position, as I say, I've done it from the back corner here where you can see things coming. Don't have a radar. So movement is key. Just last last stragglers. You'll see once once you take out one of the ogres, you're just gonna get Every, every so often you're just going to get waves of these exploders. And when I say waves, it's normally going to be like four or five of them. And then once you take out the first ogre, you're going to get a bigger wave of ads for, and there'll be one ogre left up. You need to keep on that side, on that, that side that I was at, there's no stand here and you're going to be perfectly safe. Apologies if you think that, you know, in, in this mission, especially when you're dealing with the scorn, there's never that. There's never that. Just stand here and you'll be cool. Movement is key. But but the area that I was in, that is where you should be moving around. There's enough cover that you can move from cover into cover. As I say, doing it on the Hunter, I've got the Invis. Uh, I've got the Dodge Invis, which helps a lot. That was kind of, out with the boss, that was the main kind of uh, combat section. So now, follow, the, follow where I went on the video. As you can see here, we're looking for... Uh, a switch and the switch will open up something to open up something so we activate this switch which gives us this explode it and there you can see you can see that uh agrigor agrigor is that right my eyes are terrible agrigor i probably butchered that We'll see a Grigor. You see that Grigor uh, debuff? Uh, that lasts for like 14 seconds. So there is a section coming up where you're going to have to like use that that buff uh, to get you halfway, and then you use another, which will take you into an area that gives you a buff to take you the rest of the way. So at this part here, a uh, bit of rambling there because <laughs> I couldn't remember the name of it. In this part here, what you're going to be looking for is the switch that's right in front of us. And hit that switch. Now from here, break that that uh, fuse, which will let you come up here, which will let you hit another switch. Uh, and, and basically what that switch we just hit, uh, which opens up something uh, to let us get through this. There's a, a, a gloop wall up here. And then we had another switch which let us come back here. A lot of puzzle elements here, but again, if you just follow the way that I'm going and the route that I'm taking, this is probably the fastest way to do it. Uh, and another kind of mini combat section is just that there's a... We're going to get these exploders. Back up, and there we go. And I'll break that war main cell. 
Now, there's just a couple of ads up here. There's a shielded guy. I wanted to take him. As I've said, I like to take that shielded guy out first. And there's probably still going to be some ads up here on the right. There we go. A couple of more. I, I could have... A, a couple of more? A couple more. I could have thrown my grenade and that would have dealt with them a ton faster. This, this whole mission, just the whole feel of it, I prefer this to Harbinger simply because... It's a brand new area, although it kind of looks like, you know, a season of opulence-esque uh, view on the Leviathan. But it looks so, it looks so, so much more than that. Uh, so when you, when you activate that switch, you're going to open this door, which will then will allow you to shoot a fuse. Watch out because there is that turret there. And shooting that fuse will open up another little door, which then... Will allow us to that's basically what it is when you come into a room you're looking if there's nothing obvious you're looking for a switch and if the switch doesn't add, give you anything obvious then that means uh, there's a fuse somewhere you've got to look for the fuse and that will open up something so I'm showing you guys the route to start with right so when you drop down here I'm just I'm just trying to get these exploders get these exploders here there's two of them in this, uh, there's actually four of them, see that, and there'll be one that, w that we'll have to chase. I'm just trying to get these exploders uh, out the way. So this is, as you see here, we, dro we dropped into this room, so when you drop into this room, you go right for the, the pod, and then follow the route I took. Which will take you here through the glute wall. There's your switch. And then you're out. Now you're in this room. Which, surprise, surprise, gonna have to find a switch. I like the little puzzle elements. The switches are the same switches that you would use to get into the rooms in the in the underbelly of the Leviathan. So here we go. We get that. And then through this door here to the right, through this wall, and we're good. So we're not looking for a switch, it was a pod. When we get here, we're going to have a load of ads, and we're going to have two two ogres. I'm just going to throw my tether there, because there is a lot of these guys. And then I'll break this warmind, which killed the rest of them. And as you can see, I mean, it, it might not might not be a lot, you know, on, on reflection. It might not be a lot uh, to you guys, but look at the amount of super I got back just from those ads. You know, it's it's substantial, really, when you think about it. I just fired my super, and I'm halfway towards getting it again. From, what, about eight ads? So, once we do that, we're going to come up here, activate that switch. Activating that switch, uh, I think, in this area, gives me uh, a fuse, I believe. I could be wrong. I think it does. Uh, but activating those switches either give you a fuse, that it does give me a fuse, the fuse is behind us. There we go, it's in there. And you shoot that fuse, which opens up a door, which gives you a pod. You shoot the pod, you go through the glip wall. That is basically, as I say, your rule of thumb is, if you, if you activate a switch, uh, and it doesn't open up a doorway, it'll, it'll, uh, it will be to, to shoot a fuse. Now, this section here, you've got to go all the way forward, all the way through it, so just follow my path, all the way forward to come all the way back. But you kind of have to do that. So, just, there's three of these, uh, there's three of these Scorn snipers. There's one up here to the right. You're going to activate a switch, which will then, uh, Bring out a fuse, so there's the switch. Just kill this guy here so that he's out of the way. Now we've got to go all the way back. The way we're going out is just there at the right, but we've got to go all the way back to get what pod. So you see the fuse? I've just went past it, as you can see. The fuse is right there, the exposed fuse. And now that will open up a doorway with a pod. So this... This, that, that doorway that's open, that's, that's a glute wall, but there's a pod there. The only thing that's in there is a pod. 
So you're going to go all the way back to the start here. There's your pod. So you're going to shoot that. You get that egregore uh, buff which will take you to where we just said that glut wall is just up here in this doorway. You go in here, shoot the pod, which gives you the buff again, which now you've got enough buff to get to the end. It might surprise you guys, but the easiest part of this whole court mission is the boss. The boss is so straightforward. And now we're at the boss. So there is a slight mechanic at the boss. So the rest of it, if you just fo follow... You know, more where I'm going than what I was saying. You know, if if you just follow where I'm going, and but this this you can make up your own strategy for. So when you drop in here, you're gonna have the boss. The boss does some freaky things. Now, when I say the boss does some freaky things, what I mean is, uh, the boss does some freaky things. He can teleport right in front of you. If 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 he's within halfway of the map. He can teleport right up in front of you. So be careful. I always use this side bit to get at the ads, right? So let's talk about this boss area. So this is the upper level and you are you have got a lower level. Once you once you get the boss at this very start part, once you once the boss goes and these ads come out, the boss will never come back up top. He will stay underneath. So the idea is you have to you can't just go down underneath because it's like you'll burn because it's like proper kind of heat, proper heat down there what you're gonna need to do is clear all these ads see we get there's once you clear the first wave with the shielded scorn barons you're not gonna have many enemies in that wave so you just take out these last enemies you can see i've ran out of running out of primary so i'm just wanting to get something to drop, so I was using my sniper. As you can see, it's kind of red, lit up red. That's because it's burny burny. Best way I can describe it, that's what I would say to my kids. It's burny burny. Uh, it's 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 proper heated. We need to do this coolant flush. Now, there's three three of these consoles we have to activate. You get, as you can see, uh, coolant flush 2 initi initiated. In this room, which you will burn, is the third console. So kill that ad, there'll always be an ad in there. Run in, and if as long as you've done the other two, this will give you the third coolant flush, and it will take a bit of your health away, quite a bit of your health, but it won't kill you if you've done the other two. Then what we're going to do is we're going to drop down. You can see the boss. Normally the boss is standing at one side, but he's not. He was over to the left. Let's fire a rocket at him and get, hopefully, hit him with a sniper shot. And then we go back up. I'll charge my shot and then run up. Don't, there's no need to stay up top. Uh, stay down below. There's no need to do that. Just go up top. Drop down the other side. And he, and he will be over that other side. You've got plenty of time to hit him. Now you see how it went red there? I put a couple of shots on the boss and it went red. That is his first health bar's gone. We know we're out of there, I'll just, and now we're going to get this wave of ads up top again. So the idea is, put a couple of shots on them. I used uh, my, my recommendation for the, and, and kind of uh, the reason why I used the rocket I used is auto-load and holster. I can couple it with a sniper. Now, as, I, as I've already said, well, the first time I'd done this, I used Bite of the Fox as my primary sniper, and it worked a treat, right? You don't have to use Izzy's. I did because it's a one and done that. Charge the four shots and just hit them and then by the time you do that, your rocket will be reloaded. So once you do that and swap sides, you should, you should, the, boy, the, the, the boss never gets a chance to be in your face. You can just come up top, run across up top. Now, it, it does get a little bit more difficult as we progress, but not much more. So, again, activate the two consoles which will then allow you to go and do the third kind of burnt console. Now, I didn't fire my super at the boss. I didn't feel like I needed to. I prefer to keep that for what's coming upstairs because, I mean, as much as uh, as much as I'm saying it's it's easy, as as the, the boss damage waves progress, you'll get ads spawning upstairs when you come upstairs. 
So again, this is this is my second D boss DPS. And you see there, he teleported all the way over to me. I was ready to jump back up just in case that happened. I was ready to do that, but it's cool because now we know he's over, far over the other side. So now we can hit him with a lay rocket and then hit him with an Izzy shot. My rocket's reloaded. I can put another one on him. Now when you come up for this part, you're going to have these, just three of these little lads. I don't mind that because sometimes it, it, they can really be helpful with, uh, you know, with ammunition. So now, again, you can see on the, the health bar, that's took about half his health away. And I'll go back down because I, the rocket never hit him. And back over the other side. And as you can see, every time I do that, this wave, I'm going to get a wave of these ads. But you might notice, for, for anybody that thinks that, uh, oh, that seems like a lot of lot, lot of stress with those ads up top, I'm not fighting the ads below. So I'm, I've just, I pick, I'm picking and choosing my ads. I'm not fighting the ads up top. Uh, sorry, I'm not fighting the ads at the bottom. I don't bother with those captains, I don't bother with those ads, I just come back up top. It's so easy to just come back up top, run across, you see the boss is well over the other side, and now we're back upstairs. Rinse and repeat. Uh, again, I, I pick one side, throw a grenade to start with, and just kind of melt one of these scorn barons, grenade and SMG. And we've got a war main cell. Break the war main cell, which does damage to everybody. No, because it's the last wave. We got more ads. That's why I was keeping the tether. War main cell again. Break the war main cell, and just kind of wipe clear out these ads up top. Now what will happen is exactly the same. You need to activate the. You need to activate the, the consoles once the ads are gone. But now when you come upstairs, you're going to have Scorn Barons. There won't, you won't, I, again, I still don't use my super for anything but these bigger waves of ads. 30% 30, 30 damage on the boss, additional. I mean, there's an argument that you can use it, but the, against the boss, your, your tether. But well, the reason I didn't is because I felt like it was, it was better to use it against waves of ads. So again, we've activated the two consoles, and we'll activate the third one, and there we go. As I say, so when we drop down now, as I've said, when we come back up, we're going to get Scorn Barons. So we drop down, make sure that the boss is... Throw that grenade to get that ad out of the way, just melt this ad. There's the boss. And now, because I stunned him with the rocket, I had enough time to get uh, a honed edge shot on. I reload my honed edge. Now we're going to have scorn barons, right? Just make sure you're critting these guys. Just a dodge reload. And just clear one side. There we go. And just, as I say... And there's got a war main cell, which is really cool because that just clears everything for me. Now, this is personal taste, I suppose. I don't mind fighting these guys up here. Maybe the, I haven't. I've I haven't found out. Maybe I have to fight these guys because I never killed them when I was downstairs. But I don't. I don't think so because the first time that I done this, I actually did kill the guys downstairs. So, I think, I think, uh, you just get them. So, as you can see, with, with, the, with, with the, between Izzy, Izzy and Rocket, the boss really is, is in a bad shape. Probably the next time we hit him, he's gonna die. As you can see, every time you come up, you're not gonna get a Scorn Baron. It's just that first time you come up on the last wave. And then, as you can see, we're gonna drop back down. Hit the boss with a rocket. 
and a, and a sniper shot. And there you go, guys. Solo flawless. Now, as I say, you can you can use whatever you want for Izzy. I I I I'm I'm pretty happy with the loadout I used. Just keep switching side for side, and uh, you should be fine. You don't stay downstairs. And, and and the reason another thing is, once you get one, you know, if you're not paying attention to the DPS you're doing on the boss, if you're downstairs when it when it turns red, you'll start burning and you'll die pretty quickly. So the idea is to be as close to the exit as possible. That way you can do a quick escape and, and everything's cool. So I hope this helps you. I, ho I hope that the route I've taken is pretty straightforward and you've enjoyed the run. Good luck uh, with your runs and enjoy your uh, exotic scout rifle. And uh, there will be more videos coming in the future. I will do a hunter and a wall a titan and a wallop run on this one. But for now, enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. If you did, enjoy it. A like would be massively appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Ghost. You may learn more of how he died. Return to the city. We must assess our findings.